Hello and welcome to another video. In this one, we're going to be talking about SCSS and SASS, um, which if, if you've heard them pronounced out loud, people usually just call them both SASS, even though uh, SCSS doesn't really sound like SASS. But anyway, uh, we're going to talk about the differences between the two today and what they both are. So let's jump into it. So first off, SASS and SCSS. Um, Man, that's going to be confusing. Uh, they are both preprocessors for CSS. So you write some code and then pass it through a SAS compiler or a SAS preprocessor, and it will spit out CSS. And that's what is used to style websites. And um, they particularly became popular because writing CSS by hand can be a pain. And SAS and SCSS introduced things like loops and mixins and variables and nesting and all sorts of kind of niceties that make writing CSS a lot easier. Uh, but there are two competing syntaxes for this particular type of CSS. There are other uh, CSS preprocessors. We're just going to be talking about SAS and SCSS today. There's also, what is it called, less and um, post CSS and I think there's like three or four other ones. But anyway, these, these from what I understand, are the, the most popular ones. Um, and most of the differences between SAS and SCSS are just based on their syntax. They are actually the same feature set, but a different way that you write the code for them. Uh, so I'm going to start by making a SAS file and then showing you the equivalent SCSS file and then compiling both of those into CSS. So let's start with uh, t.sass. And the way that SAS works, the one with the A, is the syntax is a set of indentation so it's a white space sensitive syntax um, and you can you know say you were styling a div maybe you were styling a hovered a tag inside of that maybe that had you know text decoration underline um all oh right the semicolons don't do anything here <laughs> i instinctively wrote the semicolons there's no semicolons in sass um, and let's say there's another element inside the div that's say you know, strong tag and font weight bolder or something. Uh, but this is this is the SAS syntax. So you can see here that you know there are two elements under this div, and so this will actually compile into two separate selectors: one that's you know div a hover, and another that's div strong. Uh, you have you know properties that are separated by a colon. There's no semicolon like you normally would have in CSS uh, because the <laughs> SAS syntax is white space limited. Um, and this might you know be familiar if you work in things like CoffeeScript or Python to some extent. Although Python would probably have a little bit more colons somewhere. Um, but this is the SAS syntax. If I were to write the same thing in SCSS. Uh, SCSS to me looks a lot more like CSS. I, I strongly prefer SCSS and I think the community kind of agrees with that. I think SAS is kind of, uh, or SASS is not quite as used. Um, but I could be wrong. It's been a while since I have, you know, spent a lot of time in front end land. Uh, I used to be a front end developer, but I have not, you know, done a lot of that in a while. Uh, font, wait, bold. Anyway, so here is the equivalent SAS code uh, but written in SCSS. You'll notice that it looks a lot more like CSS. So you have co you have semicolons after properties. Uh, you have curly braces to show selectors. And um, I don't know, this, this to me is a lot easier to read than what's going on in here. Now, the uh, neat thing is both of these actually compile to the same output. So I'm going to install virtualenvm. And then activate. I'm going to install libsass, which is the Python bindings for libsass. Uh, the actual project is called libsass python. This is a tool that I actually maintain, and it ships with a binary called pysassc, so the Python SAS compiler. And if we pass in, uh, I guess the left one was the SAS one, and if we do pysassct.scss, you'll see that they both compile to the same the same output here. Um, and there's various ways to control the output. So there's like style compressed, I think it is. Yeah, so you can see that you would get, you know, a, a compressed output instead of your 
slightly more readable. I, I really don't like this weird style of curly braces, but that's how the Ruby compiler used to do this, so that's why Libsass does this as well. Um, but anyway, that's that's SAS and SCSS. Hopefully you learned something today. Uh, if you have additional things you want me to explain, leave a comment below or reach out to me on the various platforms. But thank you all for watching, and I will see you in the next one.